fighting for gold by saying that Loki had cut it off. We don't know why Loki cut it off. So this is my telling of it. A long time ago now, Thor took to wife Sif, the goddess with the wheat white hair, and brought her to his home inside the mountain. They were very pleased with each other. Sif would rise each morning and dance on the slopes. When Thor came to find her, she would lift up on tiptoe to kiss him. But then, as it happened before, it came time for Thor to leave home for the east to hunt giants. Sif was not pleased. She did not want to be alone. So Thor asked all of the goddesses of Asgard to come and keep Sif company. He asked Frey, but she could not, being called upon to help birth the baby. He asked Eir, but she could not, being called upon to cure the sick. And one of the next said that they could not, and so Thor left, eyebrows cast downward. But Loki, having watched Thor roam around Asgard, said that he would sit with Sif while he was away. <laughs> Thor left then, but set tasks for Sif to do when he was gone. From the milk from Thor's goat, she must make skier to last her until his return. And she had a shirt to make her husband, and she had 480 casks of ale to brew for his return. Thor drank a lot of ale in a month. <laughs> Sif decided to start by making the skier. She took the milk to the hearth where Loki sat and began to warm it with hot rocks from the fire. Loki and she spoke while she worked, spinning out the thread for Thor's shirt while she waited for the milk to cool, to add rennet, and then to curdle. She then set to draining the whey while Loki blew on the fire. She made a warm supper and shared it with him. The next day, Sif had slept well, saw the floor was clean, and the barley looked healthy and fresh. She would weave the cloth for the shirt. She took the basket of thread and asked Loki if he wanted to sit by her loom and keep her company. Loki said he would stay and tend the fire. So she left. She worked long at warping the loom and tying the strands to the stones, singing of a lonely spinster who longed for company! <laughs> It was only as she got mostly through that she realized she would not have enough spare wool after cutting to give Loki as payment. Well, he did not come over and keep me company, she said, and finished her weaving, having not a tuft of wool left over. The next day, Sif went to sew the shirt. She took her fabric and her needle, and she asked Loki if he wanted to sit outside the door and keep her company. Loki said he would stay and tend the fire. So she left, but as she worked, the thread kept knotting. She would untie, but it would knot again and again. So she set it aside, and she returned to the hearth to start the ale. She began to heat the water. She did not offer Loki any, nor spoke to him at all. She tried sewing again, but that did not work. She put some uncooked bread in the pot, but Loki did not let the grain ferment. Sif tried adding more to the, uh, uh, fuel to the fire, but the fire burned low and gave nothing but smoke. Sif's face grew as red as the fire should have been. She told Loki that if he would only give trouble, he should leave. Loki said that trouble was only a gift to the stingy. Then Loki turned into a cricket, jumped under the hearthstones before Sif could squish him with her broom. That night, Sif went to bed hungry. As the last of the coals were dimming, a wind blew up and flames sprang to life, leaping and dancing until the glow could be seen through the smoke hole. But Sif did not wake up. A shake gripped the mountain, sending shivers down into the valley as Loki moved the hearthstone, his hair glinting off the firelight. But Sif did not wake up. Loki moved forward, slinging into the form of mouse. He did not shuffle. He did not scuff. He did not creak. He rose now above her bed and loomed over. The light made shine bl the blade of the scissors a deep red. And he cut until all of the wheat white hair lay in curls by his feet. Hear it now, the nightly screeching. See it now, sparks from the mountain. Beware such tremors torn from hearth rocks. From Loki's entrance, ignore this knot. The blade comes forth, born by Nal's son, shears the bounty before its time. Beware the fury found under shoe steps, 
Is this not pleasant, the payment of Loki?